Welcome to our Bible study from with Gather Magazine, and I'm Pastor Krista von Zicklin. I am pastor at St. Luke Lutheran Church here in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and I thank you warmly for joining us for the Ten Commandments, Reviving the Soul. Who would think that the Ten Commandments can be a source of life and strength? But I would say, yes, they are. And I look forward to seeing new ways in which we can discover how God's Word speaks to us and between us and how we can learn from each other about um, what these Ten Commandments still can give us today and can teach us today and can inspire us today. Um, I have used several different resources. The most important resource, of course, is whatever Bible you have. Um, I have really enjoyed using the large catechism of Dr. Martin Luther. Um, also, we are very um, blessed and enriched that we have resources such as Luther's Small Catechism with African Descent Reflections. So, Ten Commandments, Reviving the Soul, Dancing the Decalogue is what we've called this very first session. Dancing, that's a thing <laughs> in the church? I grew up as a, um, as a Lutheran, a lifelong Lutheran, um, in a Swedish-American Lutheran church in the Midwest of our country, Rockford, Illinois. Um, and you know what? We did not dance in church. We did not dance at Bible studies. We did not dance at church fellowship. <laughs> However, I was completely bowled away when, as a very young woman, I had the opportunity to go and study uh, modern Hebrew and lived in uh, Israel for a summer. And as part of that time, I went to the, uh, I went with a Jewish friend. I was living with a Jewish community and I went with a Jewish friend to um, what's known as the Wailing Wall, the last remnant of the ancient temple in, in Jerusalem. And as I looked over, I was in the women's section uh, along with my friend, but you can look because it's very carefully segregated, or it was at that time. Um, and I looked over and uh, into the men's section, and in came a whole troop of uh, men, older men, gray-haired men, big bushy beards, and they were dancing at what I thought was kind of a sober uh, uh, place in, in Israel. They were dancing and they were singing and they were just so obviously filled with the joy of the Lord. I asked my friend, what on earth is that all about? And, and she taught me about um, the love of the Jewish people for what is considered the gift of the Torah, the teachings, or what we know as the commandments of God, that that was a way in which God chose God's people and that it was not a burden, um, but it was received as a gift, as a mark of being special. So I think that's what got me uh, going down this road of just really loving um, learning more about the Ten Commandments as I've um, as I've gotten older. Um, and in the last uh, <clears throat> however many decades of my life, I've also had the opportunity to live in various parts of the world, serving with a global mission of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. And I have seen in, yes, actually in Lutheran churches also, that worship and Bible study was often accompanied by a sense of joy and of actually dancing um, and of being inspired, very literally breathing in what God's word is all about. So I thought, ah, let's, let's try some of that as we study the, um, the Ten Commandments uh, anew. I think it's something that we can do again and again and learn something new each and every time. So the Jewish Shavuot, 
um, it's worthwhile if you have a Jewish neighbor or friend um, to to ask a little bit more and learn a little bit more about this holiday. Um, biblically, it's a harvest fest, but since biblical times, it's evolved into a very specific celebration of the gift of the Word of God at Sinai. And like a wedding feast, it's celebrated like a wedding feast, God betrothed God's self to the chosen people. And none other than Martin Luther himself uh, wrote in this, uh, in this uh, large catechism and in his introduction to it, he says, then this must be certain. Those who know the Ten Commandments perfectly know the entire scriptures and in all affairs and circumstances are able to counsel, help, comfort, judge, and make decisions in both spiritual and temporal matters. So maybe we've neglected something very important by thinking, oh, Ten Commandments, that's something for a long time ago and isn't relevant today. No, indeed. And just uh, two pages earlier than that, uh, Luther writes, God's word is not like some idle tale, but as St. Paul says in Romans, it is the power of God. Indeed, the power of God that burns the devil's house down and gives us immense strength and comfort and help. I just love that image of burning the devil's house down. And I think maybe even talking about the devil is something that we maybe don't do quite uh, enough of these days as we um, must confront the realities of uh, great joys in this life, but also um, these temptations that we experience, temptations to despair in these, as we say, these troubled times when there's so much um, adversity in the world today. But the Holy Scriptures and God's Word are an invitation to delight. And so one of the things that I hope that you will do is look into the Psalms as also yeah, part of the introduction. Um, I live as an alien in the land. My soul languishes. Does your soul sometimes languish? Mine does. How long must your servant endure? You sometimes have that question for yourself. How long, oh Lord? When will you judge those who persecute me? Can we be honest that sometimes um, we do experience things like persecution? Some of us more than others. It's a reality. The wicked lie in wait to destroy me. I don't know if those are words that are meaningful to you, but surely they are meaningful to people who are going through hard, hard times in this, in this world. But if you turn to Exodus 20, that's the first time that they are written out in the scriptures. And I, I don't know about your Bible, my Bible, every one of my Bibles has the heading, the Ten Commandments. But you know what? The Bible itself, meaning, you know, the headings were added a lot later, but the scripture, the words of, the ancient words of scripture itself never says the Ten Commandments. Do you know how the, what we call the Ten Commandments are introduced? Exodus 20 verse 1 says, Then God spoke all these words. Spo then God spoke all all these words. I found this lovely quote from, um, or conversation from Pope Francis back in 2018. And he explained the importance of the word, word, how the scriptures themselves don't call these 10 uh, commandments, but calls them words. And Pope Francis said, the use of the word word instead of commandment highlights the difference between receiving an order which is how most of us look at the commandments and noticing that someone is trying to speak with us 
how often do we think of the commandments as, oh, these are the things that an old-fashioned God told old-fashioned people that they got to do or better not do. But instead, wow, what a different way of looking at it. And I think much more scriptural and much more in keeping with um, Psalm 119 especially, um, I can love an invitation to conversation. And I think that's what's happening in Exodus 20, verse 1. Which brings us to the first commandment. This is another thing I love. The Ten Commandments are never numbered in the Bible. Nowhere, um, neither here in Exodus nor in Deuteronomy where they are repeated, there's no numbers. So that's something that people have added later. So which is the first commandment? Turns out there's at least three different ways of numbering the commandments. And it's also right here for those of you who may have this Lutheran study Bible. It's also laid out there on page 154. It's called simply Numbering the Ten Commandments. But again, you can find it on various places if you just Google how to number the Ten Commandments. You may already have learned this, um, but I think it's worth remembering that the Roman Catholic, Lutheran, and Eastern Orthodox churches, the first commandment is, you shall have no gods. The Reformed and Protestant churches um, also have, you shall have no gods. That's the first commandment. You know what the first commandment is in the Jewish tradition? The first commandment is not a commandment. It's a word. And the first word is, I am the Lord your God. That's the important and first commandment. I am the Lord your God. So that's the, that's the preface. And of course it goes on, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of slavery. Our um, African descent siblings have said it this way. The first commandment which, of course, you know, we put together those two. We put together, um, I am the Lord your God with, you shall have no other gods before me. But they say this, we should be so respectful and in awe of God that we have no other gods but Yahweh. Yahweh is God, first and foremost, and is intimately connected with our history and with the history of our deliverance. Our lives are claimed by God, who is our liberator and redeemer. Each time God's name is proclaimed, it should remind us of all that God has been and done on our behalf. Our God is on the side of the oppressed and dispossessed. Wow, that's from our African descent siblings. And of all the voices that we can listen to, um, people who have the experience, the actual experience of slavery in their backgrounds, um, how amazing, um, terrible, and wonderful it is that um, they should be saying, hey, this is for all of us, that God is the God who is the liberator, and God is the God who sets us free. So, Maybe if there's nothing else that you remember um, from this Bible study, maybe for this first Bible study, that's, what, um, that's how God is speaking to us, is saying the most important thing to know is that our God is a God of liberation and doesn't want you to, doesn't want you to have anything, anything, that keeps you in chains. Our God is a God of liberation. And that really is the first word, not commandment, the first word God speaks to us when God says, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of slavery. So let's not let anything or anybody keep us in slavery. 
And that's a little bit about the very first um, of our Bible studies as we learn together from the Ten Commandments. And there's lots more digging that we'll be doing and that you will do um, as you follow the Bible study itself. Dancing the Decalogue. How do the Ten Commandments invite us into relationship with God and with each other? And how do they help us to dance and set us free? Thank you so much for your time with us today. And I look forward to hearing more about how the Bible study works for you.